Nana's come in today and told me about her issues. Um, it's really important to get that communication going. Um, notice things while you're grooming. Uh, the, the, you know, owners really do appreciate when you do notice these things because it, it shows that you're, you know, you're quite intense care that you're giving them, you know, to me when you notice these things because, you know, it's going to make the groom uncomfortable as well. You know, if you've got a dog with sore ears or a sore mouth or a sore foot, um, unless it's sort of fixed, it's going to be an ongoing thing, isn't it? So, um, you know, I know if I've had a dog that's got bad teeth and it doesn't like its face touched, you know, it kind of makes the groom difficult for the dog and we don't want that. It's got an ear problem. We can't brush the ear, you know, um, we can't dry the ear, trim the ear, even holding it might be sore. Same with the foot, we might have a, you know, sore foot or long nails that's making the um, feet uncomfortable. So the more comfortable we can make them, the better the groom. So it's not just about, you know, ear care. There's a whole thing that goes around with it. But maybe I'm a little bit overly conscientious. <laughs> I'm a little bit of intensive, I think, for some people. Um, but you know when you you know you might miss things um and you don't make the owner aware and then in a week's time the dog's got a really bad ear worse than what it was before they might turn around to you and say you've caused it you know so at least you know that you know if you've seen something you need to ad advise them um so if they do call up and say my dog's got a poorly ear or whatever you say yes we um, check back on your notes. Let me just have a look. I'll get back to you. Um, yeah, we we did inform you so um, about the the ear problem. Um, so yeah, a bit of intensive care goes a long way, doesn't it? So I'm gonna get Missy in the bath, and um, I'll talk to you in a little while. So I've just got Misty on the table before I put her in the bath. Um, I've just took a load of her hair off because she um, she missed an appointment. So I just brought this one slightly forward. Um, I have noticed a few things with her at the moment. She has got a few hot spots on the side. Let me just put her down here, a little bit of uh, like dry skin there um, and I'm probably um, I'm going to make sure that I really hydrate the coat today so I'll use um, you know a shampoo and conditioner I use the um, secret weapon um, the conditioner spray really give her a good hydration um, it, because it's a nice natural shampoo and um, that will really give her a nice uh, clean um, Bichon's, um, you are a Bichon, aren't you? But she's more like a Bichon cross. Um, we keep her sort of this part of her head round, but she has longer ears. Nana likes the, the longer ears. Now, Bichon's grow a lot of hair in their ears. Um, obviously, I do the same like I did with Wilson. I keep the inside of underneath the ear quite short so the ear the air can flow to the ear and also um we have a big thing with ear plucking in this country um do we or don't we um and basically if say um you've got a dog with a lot of hair in there and then you pull it all out it's going to irritate it um especially if it there's something underlying or there's lots of dirt and wax and stuff you don't really want to be pulling but if you do it as part of the course so part of your groom is you check in ears and you might just see a few hairs and you can just take a few hairs out at a time um, and because Misty comes quite regular you know she gets little tiny bits of hair in her ear um, and if I keep on top of it then 
her, her ear says hair free and you know it, it can be cleaned a lot lot easier um, so as you can see her with her having this issue she she ha, it she feels a little bit oily a bit oily and dry at the same time it's kind of strange but you can see that um, <clears throat> because we tend to her ears each time her ears are quite clear there and we'll look at the other one let's look at the other one they're quite quite clear and literally if you can just take off you know from the outside just little bits of hair like that what you can see little bits with your fingers It just keeps the ear a lot cleaner, and and you know it, if you're somebody that doesn't doesn't like messing with ears at all, you need to, if there is a lot of ear hair there, you need to make sure it's really clean and dry. If you're not going to do that on a regular basis, but we just do little bits. I've got another Bichon, Molly Bichon, Molly Long Bichon. Her mum does her ears. Um, all the time when she brushes her she checks her ears she gets little bits of hair she just takes them out and she doesn't get ear problems her ears are kept clean um, but it's like when you we leave lots of hair it gets warm it's a breeding ground for bacteria and it gets all wa waxy but if you're not going to take the hair out you have to at least make sure that it's all nice and clean in there um, so that any wa wax build up there is removed um, so so yeah but it, it just it just comes out quite easily just little little bits at a time um, so that's generally how I tend to my dog's ears so I, I generally check them every time they come um, and we do have this thing that vets don't really like um, called sonic powder um, so if, if like for some reason the hair that her ears have got is you know, extremely hairy I've got a little bit of this dusting round just a slight dust around a slight dust around of there and it's so almost like a, an anaesthetic if you know what I mean it's like a herbal powder it was actually designed by a vet um, and it just helps you get, get a little bit of grip and you can just take bits of you know, you don't want to be pouring loads of powder down the ear um, because then it might just sort of set like concrete down there. But if you just put a light dust in, uh, you know, it takes any, any irritant out. Um, and uh, it's, it's quite expensive actually. Um, and I will put, it's like canker powder, we call it thornic canker powder. I'll put that in the description so you can see. I believe that was like fifty pounds. It's, I've had it a long time, a long, long time. So I don't use much of it. It's nearly full still. So uh, I'm just use that to put on on my fingers and just sort of grip little bits of hair out. And it, if it's not coming out easily, then I would just leave it alone. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good for lots of different things. So I'll put the information about Thornit in there um, as well. And I'll put the the air cleaner solution that I use as well. Um, I don't have any of the um, herbal dog company ones, so, but I'll put that in the description as well. So yeah, if you do it sort of each time, take care of the ears each time, um, you don't you don't get the the issues um, and the ears kept clean and fresh and if you need to clean it you can clean it easily so i'm going to get uh, misty moo sorted and we'll see you in a bit so here she is all done you see i've done her head a little slightly bit shorter today because she got um, her eyes were a little bit gunky so i wanted to try and um take the hair back from her, her eyes quite a lot today so 
um, I think with whatever's going on with her skin, it's affected her eyes. So she's got a cute little, it's almost like a little Snoopy face today. Um, so ears, ears nice and clean. Let me just see if I can turn you around so we can see. There, see there's not a lot of hair here, you know, so the air can flow. Uh, she doesn't have the typical Bichon style head. She has more of a pet head, so it's, I sometimes do this a lot rounder, but um, I wanted to take it down considerably, um, just in case she can't come again for whatever reason with the, whatever's going on. Uh, we'll go we'll go short and cute so I've literally just leveled off her beveled off the bottom of her ears her ears are actually there they've got little ears but then you like your ears a bit longer doesn't she so I've done a two comb on her two comb which is where are we? that one, which is the, uh, just to remind myself, six millimeter. So it feels a lot nicer, not as dry now. That flaky skin has come off on that little patch there. The flaky skin has come off and it feels, feels nice and soft and hydrated. Ooh, you're beautiful now. She had it, she's got a little bit of a sore thing on the, Oh, come here, sweetheart. She also has a little bit of a, um, a scabby thing there. It's just, just hanging on for dear life, this little bit of scabby. Um, so I'm going to give you a little bum, a spray of my handy Lucillin. Is that okay with you? Right, let's just give that a little bit of a spray. Right. Just give her a bit of instant relief on the old booty. Okay. So, um, yeah, we'll see whose ears are next. So here's Ted. I probably won't uh, get a chance to do much with, to show you on Ted. I probably won't get a chance to show you much on Ted. That is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but I have to give them an amazing shout out because he missed, they had a, um, a death in, in their immediate uh, family friends circle. And unfortunately it fell on uh, Ted's appointment. Um, so he missed, obviously, because I'm so sort of busy at Christmas, I couldn't put him in anywhere. So he missed his appointment. So he's gone over, Ooh, we've gone over at least, we're on the 1st of February, aren't we? So, four, five weeks, four weeks, five weeks, um, over his normal due groom. Um, but um, he's no nuts or anything. It's amazing, amazing. I told him that I've given them brownie points because they've, they've just looked after you so well. Um, Ted's mum has actually got a blaster as well uh, because they go out for lots of walks and they bath him and, and what have you. Um, and they use the blaster on him to get him dry and you can tell because of the way his, his coat looks um, and he always smells beautiful you always smell beautiful um, so you know that that is that's the downside of keeping a shaggy haircut is is that you know you you have to do what maintenance at home but if you you know you're able to maintain it you can keep it can't you so um, same with uh, Ted's ears, um, he doesn't grow much hair in there and they're, they're just, where are we, 
they're super clean. His ears are super clean. He's kept gorgeous. Um, he has sort of longish ears, um, but where's his leather? The, his ear leather's just there. So because he's kept longer, I sort of go to near the beard area. Too long, I think you put the head to the floor and they dangle, they're sniffing and they're dangling and then the ends become all sticky and knotty and they don't smell too good if they're putting their ears and things. So, um, long but not too long. Many people say short but not too short. <laughs> we get that a lot. So, um, yeah, there's not a knot in this dog. His tail's a bit crimped, but it's not knotty, it's just not. I do love my customers, I do. So I'm just gonna take him down one length um, and keeping him all shaggy. But you can see where I, in actual fact, now his hair's grown a little bit. You can see here where I've kept it shorter. I've shortened that area there. And that's basically, you know, when you've got a lot of hair under here, it tends to get matted um, because it's the friction of the collar and, and whatever. So I always keep that sort of clean and so the air can flow and it just keeps things a lot more manageable, doesn't it? Mm, are you okay? He gets very distressed when mummy goes, but we're having five minutes and we'll have a treat. Do you want that? No, we don't want that. What about, everybody goes mad for these um, Gusto steak things. What about that? Wow. We'll try later. I'll put it on my hand. They do smell good, don't they? But yeah, it says no. Not not at the moment, my head's still missing my mum and I'm in no mood for treats at this moment in time. So I'm going to get him in the bath, I'm going to fluff him all up and I'm going to take a comb attachment over. Um, he can go pretty long, I have to say, because they look after him really well. I'll probably go with the six if I'm honest, because he does need a cut and uh, the 19 millimetre is is very is a very nice length. We like him shaggy, so we might even go one above and go for the seven. But we'll see. We'll see him at the end anyway, just so you can see what he looks like. So this is before. So it's very shaggy and long. <laughs> And let's do some magic. So as if by magic, he's all done. He's just, he, he loves looking out the window. Uh, so a lot of hair came off and he's still got lots, a lot left. Um, and you can see here, I take off the inside of his ear there. He again doesn't have lots of um, ear hair so he, his ears do keep quite uh, clean and uh, he's washed on a regular basis. Like I say he always, he always smells beautiful when you come, don't you? Beautiful now. Look, that's beautiful now. Where's your mum? Where's your mum? Where's your dad? Oh, I can see your dad. <laughs> so that was lovely, Ted. And he's down to number six, and he'll be back in his routine now. 
um, and I was just saying I've, I've mentioned him on, on today's uh, video because they do really well. His dad's, she said, he's, he's quite obsessed about, you know, him, uh, his grooming and looking after him and they do absolutely super well. And um, he, it, it's brilliant. It's just brilliant. And, and then they have a blaster, like I say. The only bits that he had was around his shoulders. So it's just like, you know, where his friction of moving, but it wasn't tight. It was loose enough to be able to get out. His armpits were very good, tiny little bit under there. You know, so for missing an appointment on a long style, it's done excellent. So well done, Ted Stad. Brownie points for you. <laughs> um, everybody, uh, every groomer will be jealous. <laughs> um, so I've just got one more job to do today. Hope you've enjoyed this this video of me talking a bit about ears as I go through my day. Um, we've not touched really much on shaping and things like that. I focus more about you know, the, you know, the, what you can use to clean, and and the my trims, you know how I how I try and make sure that the air can flow to them, and it sort of keeps it shorter for longer under there. Um, obviously, helps uh, it sort of not overheat under there because like I say, dirt bacteria grows under there, and then it creates this, you know. Um, ear infections and such like that um, you know your dog's going into water you know if it jumps in the lake dirty water you're getting you know water down there bacteria um, you know they're getting wet in muddy puddles and head to the floor picking up all these bugs so you know keeping their you know their trims you know manageable as well so that they're not got dangly ears, they're not getting matted, they're not getting heated up and bacteria growing. I'm just repeating myself now. So um, I'm gonna clean up after 10 because <laughs> I'll show you down here. Um, hey, there was quite a lot that came off Ted today. Quite a substantial amount of hair. So I'm gonna quickly hoover up and gorgeous Alfie will be due. And he's a big cockapoo cross. He's like a giant cockapoo. He looks a little bit like the Daz dog. He's beautiful. Um, so I'll see you in a sec. So here's lovely Alfie. Ain't he like the Daz dog? Mm. Um, he has had an ear infection. Uh, the vet said he's completely fine to have a haircut. It's completely cleared up now, but just to let me know. Um, so I'll make extra sure that I don't get excess water down here, which pushes, you know, any dirt and debris, you can sort of push it further down. So we'll make sure you can, see so you can use cotton wool. You can get like bits of cotton wool and put it down but sometimes they shake their head because that was always a rule back in the day uh, when we were at college we had to put cotton wool in their ears um, but they always used to shake it out by the time you get to the table you're like mm, where's the cotton wool <laughs> oh there it is on the floor um, yeah so as luck would have it um, it's uh, all better now so um, which is good um, and you can, I'll just actually show you with uh, with Alfie's ear what, what I've done because you can see what I've actually done previously. Let me come down here now. Can you see how I've clipped his inside of his ear short? And the same with, and the same with this ear. Can you see how it's a lot shorter on the inside? That's because his hair gets very thick inside um, and it just makes them overheat so um, we'll just make sure that that's all cleared again um, his, his ears look fine he's letting me touch them so that's 
that's good. I normally take some hair off before I put it in the bath because he's got such thick, a thick coat. Um, so we'll see him after the bath anyway. Um, here's, here's him before. Ooh. He's like a giant polar bear, aren't he? A giant polar bear. This is actually his second home. Um, his, his first owners uh, couldn't care for him, so um, he's uh, now with these. I actually used to do. They used used to do their old dog, which is a little Westy, and she sadly passed away. She lived a ripe old age. Um, she was a lovely dog, and, uh, and then they got uh, Alfie here. And he was quite boisterous to start with, but he's just like chilled out. They've had the young children now, and he's just so chilled out, you know. He's a really chilled out dog, aren't you? Uh, so I'll give you, I'll show you quickly um, when I finished him. Uh, they'll be here about five o'clock to pick him up. And um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Obviously, I can talk about ears in um, a little bit more depth maybe as in trimming when I come across an ear um, maybe you know a shape of an ear um, clipping of ears um, different styles and stuff like that because uh, the, the, there are uh, different styles that you can have with the uh, with ears, you know, you could have them all off. You can have them um, sort of fluffy, take them down on a comb and make them fluffy. You can have them straight. Uh, you can have them long. You can have them short. You know, there's. You can have you know cocker ears, so you could take the top off and have the rest long. You know, when you see the cockers. You know, miniature snouses, you know, have their ears clipped off short. That's their part of their breed style. So we could maybe go in some into some depth about, you know, the trimming of the ears. I've mainly focused on the cleanliness of the ear and how I shape the head and stuff to help the ear care. So I hope you enjoyed the video, like I've just said. I'm sure I've just said. Um, Thank you very much for liking and subscribing to the channel. Um, like I say, the more the more likes we get, the more the channel will get seen, and the more people that we can help um, with their care of their pet. So realise I haven't really showed you how to avoid the water going down the dog's ears when you're bathing. So literally. There is a hole there. Um, I don't put my finger on the hole, I put it underneath. So it's at the, the base here. So not on the hole, on the base. And then I'll just push in, push in there to block. So I can literally wet the air. Yeah, and also if I'm doing it that way, I can also put my hand like that with the ear on top and I can hold the ear like that as well and block the water from going. So if you want to, you could either put it on top or underneath, whichever you feel comfortable. Just that when you're putting the water over, you're blocking the water from going down the ear um, because like I say if you've had issues or there's lots of you know you may have noticed when you you start to groom your dog um, obviously do your first checks you maybe give it a little bit of a clean before you put them in the bath so that, that when you come to the bath you're not putting excess stuff down there or you may even choose to say I'm not going to bath your dog's head today. Um, I'll, I'll wait for you. You know, it depends how bad it is. It's just a bit of muck and stuff. You can just clean it. Um, but if it, it obviously looks like it's in serious, you know, need of attention, 
then maybe you could say, listen, I'm not gonna do dog's head and do the method where I use the dry shampoo on Oscars. I'll put that in the description. I sprayed the, um, the dry shampoo on his head when he had an ear infection because the vet said he's through, halfway through his treatment trying not to bath his head. Um, so we, so I just, from there on, I did a normal trim and then the top here uh, on his head, I gave him um, the dry shampoo, which was the uh, Herbal Dog Company shampoo, uh, which, which smells really nice. And I gave that a good rub through and then I rubbed it with the towel and I dried his head as normal. So that way it wasn't getting any water down. So, but literally you just, you know, you put your thumb uh, blocking the air canal, water over, or you, if you wanted to, you could just put your finger in, you know, so holding, the, you know, so you don't get water down the air. When we try and do that as much as possible, as our washing routine, we try and avoid doing that. Um, well, I do. <laughs> and I think it just goes back to the days where we had to put cotton wool down the ears to, you know, to avoid water going down. And also they do shake. You get lots of water down there, you're gonna start shaking the head. So I have wet his head already and you can see he's not shaking because nothing's gone down his ear. Um, we were always told to do the head last because they would shake, but I do the head first because I leave the facial on while I'm washing their body, their facials doing its thing. Um, and that's, oops, battery. That's what I do. So, so yeah, you literally just hold over the ear itself to block the, the hole. You can put it over or, or use your thumb to block it. And uh, that's it, really. So I'll crack on. So there he is, all done. And uh, you can see how I've taken out the inside of his ears there. Um, so that'll help with his, if he has to have any more drops. I'm not sure if he's completely finished, but I think the vet said he was, excuse me. I need my hair sorting now, don't I? Hey, do you want to take a treat? Oh, so done with it. Let me see. <gasps> What's this? Oh, you want that? Mmm. Oh, that was so gentle. Oh, <laughs> you spat it out. Go on, try again. It's nice. No, not feeling that one. No. Um, have we got any more of those other ones? What about these ones? What about that one? Everybody likes them. Yes, they love the state ones. Uh, excuse my hair. The Augusto, Augusto steak ones. So, there he is. I have a chance to take it <laughs> You want some more? <laughs> See if they'll go that way. That way. You think? Ooh. Oh yes. They they do smell delicious. They smell like freeze dried steak. There. Oh yes. Oh. And that one. Oh yes. Mmm. That nice. Yeah. <laughs> So there he is, all done. Um, um, thank you for joining me and I'll see you very soon. Let me know what you think in the comments. Alfie's just gone and I've just realised I call him the Daz Dog, don't I? It's not the Daz Dog, it's the Flash Dog. Oh, honestly. Every dog today has been called Murphy and I've just called Alfie Murphy. Even Misty got Murphy today. Honestly. But if and if you're not if you're not watching from the UK, 
the Flash. It's a it's a cleaning claw cleaning product, and um, there's a lovely like cockapoo type. It's like a giant. It could even be a labradoodle, but it's very sort of. It looks like a giant cockapoo, but just like Alfie. Um, obviously, I keep Alfie cut down, but they, they look so similar. Um, but yeah, it was the Flash Dog, not the Daz Dog. <laughs> I'll see you very soon.